first news line Hello there, a very good evening and welcome to another edition of Newsline Live. We're coming, of course, to you live and direct from our News First studios here in Colombo. Elections are a long way from now. Although elections should be held, um, or at least we are in an election period, elections have been announced, uh, but the date has been postponed indefinitely. But um, with everything happening here in Sri Lanka, one might feel a bit disempowered as to not being able to select their leaders, maybe even not being happy with what the leaders uh, that are currently running Sri Lanka are doing. Uh, despite when an election comes, I think we need to learn as Sri Lankans from our past uh, and, and not just vote with rhetoric, not just vote for whoever seems popular at that time when an election is held. We need to be more informed. We need to understand who we are voting for. We need to understand the policies that we are voting for. And that is one of the reasons why uh, here at Newsline we give an opportunity to all political parties to come on board and present their policies, their plan, their way out of this economic crisis uh, that has been caused, of course, by successive governments here in Sri Lanka and also not forgetting the people who voted for those successive governments. And today, we've dedicated time on Newsline to the Jatika Janabala Vega, or the National People's Power Movement. We've got uh, Chaturanga Abe Singha from the NPP joining us today. Thank you very much, Chaturanga, uh, for joining us. So, first things first, Chaturanga. Now, when we speak about uh, uh, the Jatika Janabala Vega here, uh, one of the biggest concerns, at least, uh, that I hear from uh, you know, close circles, uh, other contacts uh, in Colombo, the western province, um, let's say the financial uh, capital of Sri Lanka, is the fact that uh, the JJB is a socialist party, that the JJB follows you know, these Lenin theories, Marxist theories, and uh, they are really not right for the capitalistic system that has been set up here in Sri Lanka and their main concern is that come a JJP government or at least um, the JJP come to an influential position in government, um, the party will take Sri Lanka back years and years and try to reset things from the beginning which I think on a balance of probabilities is pretty unrealistic. But how does the JJP respond to these concerns? So I think uh, these concerns were there with me also when I was young <laughs> mm. uh, because the, the learnings that we've uh, got on capitalism, socialism and in-betweens mm. uh, is very less as mm. a society. So if you look at uh, from the transformation in the human history, um, there was initially the primitive society and then there was feudalism and mm. then the capitalism began. So in 19, uh, it was 800s um, where the Marx uh, theory came into play. So mm. basically in simple he said, uh, you know, accumulation of wealth mm. by individuals mm. uh, to make more profits for mm. them is not going to create a better society in simple theory. Mm. Right? So he said this system is going to collapse mm. and there should be a better system which is more equitable mm. and just, mm. where the whole society is part of the wealth mm. and everybody has a better life. Mm. That was a theoretical basis, mm. right? And uh, I think uh, from that theory, the, the proven fact was that the capitalist system did not work. In 1930, mm. the Great Depression came mm. and world realized uh, when the, the capital owners mm. decides what needs to be produced, how it should be governed, how mm. much should be paid to labor and all those things, the system collapses, right? Mm. The stock market collapses. And then the world realizes, no, this is not possible. The market cannot decide everything. There should be some form of intervention by the state also. State mm. means us people. Mm. Mm. So, there's people who has capital and who decides and creates businesses, production, everything they decide on the market mm -hmm. and there should be some form of influence from the government. Regulators. Regulate uh, four things. So, they, they it is called Keynesian economics, right? Mm. So, people need to understand. So, Keynesian economics said no, the free market will remain, the capital 
the intention of capitalists will remain but however let the government also intervene in full employment mm. that means a full utilization of resources mm. let the government intervene in labor reforms mm. ensure that the labor also has a fair deal in the pie mm. and they also said let's government uh, get control or uh, provide public services mm. right so that it becomes much fairer and equitable mm. and they said let the government also regulate in certain areas so mm. those were the four main interventions mm. the, the it's called the new deal in uh, 1950 mm. every whole world decided on it right mm. and i think uh, most capitalist countries who had that you know the the capital deciding everything that needs to happen they made moved into keynesian economics mm. and uh, the development took place in the world and if anybody want to read the history the development from 1950 to 1970s far greater than the development from 1970 to today in 1970 onwards the neoliberal economics came into play mm. so neo neoliberal economists they basically said no this is not the right way to go we should go back to the old system hmm. that the market should decide hmm. everything and government should you know play a passive role hmm. and the developed nations by that time actually adopted these concepts hmm. uh, and they continued their economies hmm. and uh, there were certain countries who did not adapt all these neoliberal economic hmm. theories they continued to have a government intervention so it's a strike between the, whether the state or the people intervening in market hmm. versus the market becoming fully free hmm. whether it can create a just system hmm. so if you really look at the world now as you correctly said the world has embraced the capitalist system which hmm. currently termed as neoliberal economics and the world has not gone in the right direction the inequality has grown hmm. the the super rich becomes richer hmm. and the environment has you know uh, a, uh, environment is dying mm. where the world has come into a fix where the sustainable goals which was uh, published in 2015 mm. is not attainable mm. now let's first agree that the way that we are going even we like it or not it's not working mm. right so then if you take the development theories uh, the, there are only 67 developed nations so you need to understand this now even how much we talk about this development the developed nations are like two thousand dollars or more above, above per, per capita, capita income. right? And out of this, Charlene, half of this, hmm. uh, or oh, mostly like you know, probably forty percent of them are uh, states who had accumulated capital through colonialism, hmm. right? They had the capital, right? And the rest of the countries are who came through a system or economic process hmm. to win the world market, right? Uh, the the Chinas, the Vietnams, the Indonesia, hmm. um, Singapore, Japan, India. So these are the countries who didn't had a colonial background, hmm. but they came onto this three. So hmm. today is the world. There is no far right, hmm. neither a far left, right? Hmm. So this fear of communism is that the history we know of hmm. Russia. I mean that's the most known. Communist, story, country. communist country maybe it's china also in the mix uh, well yeah in terms of a governance system mm. right the state try to superimpose mm. communist way of living mm. right you know collective when you know we are happy with uh, you know minimalism now actually the europe is moving to that side because when people have satisfied their needs they understand the best way of happiness is minimalism Hmm. right there is no greed hmm. they don't want to own things they go do and meditate right hmm. so this greed the basic concept of capitalism is getting broken in the most developed nations hmm. so from theory it will move from primitive society to capitalist society socialism to communism that hmm. we do believe hmm. one day there will be very smart intelligent people who is less greedy who will be happy with the facilities that is around them and kind of you know live a happy life mm. right so anyway in this whole process this socialist reforms mm. has been adopted by all the countries now so mm. you have the capitalist system to mm. balance it off mm. you have socialist reforms mm. that is like free education free health 
hmm. government regulation hmm. so there is no simple free market in the world government has decided what needs to be produced or what can be produced and how much it needs to be produced there is a, a certain level of control in the market hmm. right so from jatika jana balavege we are very clear we are going to take the path of the development path that any country took right what is it it's basically figuring out what are our competitive advantages hmm. and what are the things that we can export hmm. what are the things we can produce hmm. we will have a national plan hmm. to support that hmm. south korea has done it singapore still does it india does it vietnam does it china does it they have a mega plan for the country hmm. and then public enterprises will do this we are very clear very openly i am saying the country's economic engine will be public entrepreneurship and sme sector hmm. state is going to support this uh, uh, enterprises hmm. and entrepreneurs and state will provide what state will provide the infrastructure hmm. low cost base of manufacturing hmm. so there are certain things that the then the state has to get in more like fuel energy hmm. and technology hmm. so that we can provide it at the lowest possible cost hmm. and then state will intervene at two places hmm. one is the energy market hmm. and also the financial market right. why because we don't think the oligopolies private oligopolies can make a fair outcome as we see hmm. today <laughs> since yesterday right so and then the state will also look at the essential goods so if the essential goods be cannot be provided by the free market at a fair rate mm. government will intervene mm. those are the two places jatika jana balavege will intervene from a government perspective mm. we will focus heavily on supporting the uh, entrepreneurs to win the world with a national interest mm. and a government responsibility today mm. government is not responsible for businesses falling apart but mm. we will be responsible if you have a target we will go there and if we can't achieve the target you can take us off from the vote hmm. and we will focus on education hmm. because that's the only path that sri lanka can take hmm. to create more value to this country hmm. we will focus on efficient government management right because it's not inefficient hmm. we will very much focus on uh, international trade the markets that we have not penetrated yet hmm. and we will have a very strong uh, foreign service hmm. to support our entrepreneurs and enterprises hmm. to win the market hmm. and i don't think anybody should be scared of that kind of a plan <laughs> and we are the only party who says our manifesto hmm. will made law hmm. after we win no hmm. other party says that hmm. right so then if you have any uh, doubt you can read the manifesto you can read the manifesto and if mm. there's anything that you dislike mm. we also presented our framework of economy uh, in january 23 if you mm. don't like anything you can talk to us mm. and figure this there's nothing to hide mm. and jvp has transformed heavily in terms of letting go of this arms struggle mm. they are now i mean for the last good 30 years hmm. they are very much focused on a parliamentary power and democracy hmm. it's very comfortable for people like us to come in hmm. second they have taken a very open path on the economic reforms to say which areas they will intervene and why hmm. and this is the exactly same path vietnam is taking hmm. um south korea has taken india is taking hmm. likewise Hmm. and also don't get confused about the economic model and the state governance model also hmm. now we have dictatorship in capitalism we have dictatorship in Social. communism <laughs> right hmm. we have uh, open like uh, uh, you know uh, fully free market on one side we have a government intervene market in another side hmm. so we are not really we are very much openly saying it will be a democracy Hmm. there will be parties contesting we will be in power you can vote us out hmm. and there will be a economy that is a mix of the best of the capitalist world and the best intentions of the socialist world hmm. 
so recently when I was on social media of course I need to put this question to you <laughs> Chaturanga um, there was a post that was circulating of this bus halt mm. that was built of course um, uh, embodying uh, maybe several communist symbols if you will uh, and it carried a caption saying you know these uh, the JJB and the JVP are still not in power mm. uh, they have a little bit of extra public support and this is how they plan on running the country. This is what you can expect under a JJB government. Now, I don't know about the authenticity of this post. Um, has the JJB looked into it? I mean, it's, yeah, it's not so a we huge also, deal. Uh, we also <laughs> saw it on the Facebook. Hmm. So basically, uh, in a village, uh, a youth group, hmm. uh, there was a person who who believed in communism and you know who has been reading and preaching about it. Who is not a part of the JVP? Uh, well, I think he would have been a supporter, hmm. right? Hmm. Uh, not part of a member. Hmm. So he has passed away. Hmm. So the friends, hmm. in name of him, in his memory, in memory, created the symbol he liked. Hmm. And this is don't get scared of this symbol. This symbol. Uh, is uh, is representative of the working class. Hmm. Still today, you and me are labor. Hmm. You don't have to, I mean, we can't be shy about it, right? <laughs> we get paid at the end of the month, we are labor. Hmm. And I am very uh, intrigued to see that the Sri Lankan executives do not celebrate the May Day. Hmm. It's not a communist thing. <laughs> it's a collect actually it happened in US. Hmm. The collective bargaining and the fights and the rights of the working class. Hmm. So, it's the farmers uh, is a symbol of you know their kata and the hmm. mitya is the kamkaru. Hmm. So, today you can replace it with a you know computer <laughs> and something else, but we are still providing labor. Maybe a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, right, because we still provide labor. Hmm. Right, so basically you don't have to get scared of it, it's an international symbol hmm. uh, to represent and still it's been used. Hmm. And mind you, uh, there are labor parties in the world hmm. and New Zealand labor party, the, the party that you guys loved with Jason, uh, Jacinta Ardern, hmm. right? that's a communist party historically <laughs> and they are a left wing hmm. party. So there is left wing and there is right wing, there is nothing hmm. to worry about because the intent of a left wing party is a just society. Hmm. We don't believe that you know accumulating wealth to few people is not going to make a just. Hmm. And there is acceptance across the world hmm. that the capitalist system hmm. can be benefited hmm. through a public intervention. Hmm. So, do not worry about these things and we have been kept everything clear and transparent for you. Hmm. And also, if you have real doubts, hmm. we are uh, not a party now. NPP is now a public organization hmm. that can you know anybody can you know be part of. Hmm. It's a people's movement. Hmm. So, you can be part of the people's movement so that you can reduce your mistrust as much as you have. So, if you still have a bit of a doubt and if you live around Colombo, give me a call, I will come and have a coffee with you <laughs> or a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Chaturanga, moving forward of course, um, Sri Lanka's. So, just to be clear, uh, the picture that of course, um, maybe your opponents, uh, people who really do not support uh, the, the JJB are trying to paint uh, or are of the uh, impression of is that um, the JJB will come, will you know haul back all of these capitalistic policies, but none of that is going to happen. No. What do you, the problem is that you use, still use the term hmm. capitalist policies. Hmm. There is no capitalist policies, right? Hmm. There is a market hmm. and in that market, NPP is driving for economic democracy. Would mm. you don't like it? Economic democracy means every person mm. has a right mm. and if they have the will mm. to become an entrepreneur, don't mm. you like it? Today it can't happen, right? If you have accumulated capital at your home, you can start a business. And if you are known to a politician, you can get a loan. But if you are a genuine entrepreneur who has nothing in your hand, there is no opportunity for you to make a de mark in the market. Hmm. So, NPP is very keen to say, we have, we are driving for economic democracy. And if you do not believe us, hmm. right, if you do not believe what Chaturanga says and all that, go and read, there is a huge amount of content about new economic 
uh, movements, right? Mm. Alternative movements for capitalism. Mm. What is the problem with neoliberalism? Mm. And be very clear, capitalism and neoliberalism is different. Mm. Capitalism is the intent of the market to accumulate individual wealth. That is how the society will work. That's, That's paramount. That's there, mm. right? Neoliberalism is basically saying state should move forget out. about it. State should move out. Mm. That is not working. That is why the global economists are writing against neoliberalism. Mm. And they also put a fine print to say, I am not against capitalism. <laughs> because they know this neoliberal system. There is a misconception. Is, yeah, this neoliberal system is killing the world. Mm. Where after they moved out of the Keynesian, mm. and, and then. Um, the world is, people are improving, hmm. people are getting away from greed. Hmm. As you as you grow, hmm. as you become wealthier, as you after you consume, you know things that you need, hmm. you get more into minimalist lifestyles. Hmm. You try to be simple. That's what the world, the, the, the I mean, that's what the real development of a society would look like. Hmm. But world is moving there and we believe world is moving there hmm. and socialism is the path from that to uh, a better society, equal society. Yes, but of course, um, this is not pure hmm. socialism because people, there, there are those who propound the argument saying that, um, you know, under a JJB government, uh, the people's way of life, hmm. I think that is what has really broken down with the economic crisis, uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic and the complete breakdown in governance here in Sri Lanka. It's the people's way of life that has been broken, damaged and, and hurt the most. Um, so there are, you know, sentiments that are going about in society saying that, you know, people's ownership of land will be affected. Um, these kind of speculations are still... I think this is, I think that's, they are, they are trying to figure it out from a Russian experience. Hmm. Even in school, hmm. when they talk about socialism or communism, hmm. they give example of Russia, which hmm. broke down, trying to super enforce uh, ideology into public. Hmm. It does not work. No? So, hmm. if you are in a democracy and if people do not believe in that, we are, we are also not there to do anything like that. Hmm. But what is happening now, hmm. you are getting taxed heavily. Hmm. Is it a socialist government that is there, Shal? Hmm. People hmm. are suffering and they are also paying tax and hmm. nothing comes back as education. Hmm. Nothing comes back as health. Hmm. There is no opportunity to do business. Hmm. Is it a socialist system that exists here? Hmm. Right? No, right? So, it is a matter of how a state will run an economy and how we will give uh, opportunity and very clearly say we do not have a worry about wealth creation. Hmm. We do not have any worry. There is a fair tax. There was a fair tax. Hmm. Now, there is unfair tax. Hmm. When we come, we will ensure that is reduced for the, um, uh, the working population that is at currently th uh, goes up to 36, right? And also, we will ensure you have your opportunity to accumulate wealth, hmm. but you pay the fair tax and also enjoy the benefits of hmm. public services. You have not ever enjoyed it. You are paying for your education, you are paying for health, you are paying taxes, you are having your own transport. You are spending the money that you could have grown in savings or investments hmm. in consumption due to these governments. Hmm. When JJB comes, we will ensure you save more. We will ensure your tax money is coming back to you as education, so your child does not need private education. right? So, that is how it is going to reform and we have no problem with people who has money as long as that money is crea created in a just way. Um, Chaturanga, just one question from, um, well of course, one of our viewers and it is a question coupled with the statement, uh, aren't these all speculation? Looking back at them, which is I think uh, referring to the uh, JVP, hmm. uh, what can we expect from them? Um, so, two things uh, you can expect from us, which you never had. So, one thing is a new political culture where the politics becomes a public interest beyond personal interest. That I can guarantee you, Shah. Hmm. Second is you will see an economic reforms which most 
of the developed nations, recently developed nations has taken place. Hmm. Uh, very well crafted industry driven national plan hmm. with pri priority industries we have figured out six industries hmm. and that will be done by the industry and the government will be part of it hmm. uh, education policy that facilitates that hmm. growth a tax system which is fair and transparent hmm. an efficient government and also a globally connected sri lanka hmm. right and if that is what you want and if you are absolutely sure that it is not going to happen through the current politicians, hmm. you will have to take a risk if you are worried, right. There is no change until you make a risk and if you still feel uncomfortable, talk to us hmm. and we are very open. Uh, so, Chaturanga, we are in the final few minutes of the show. Just one last question, um, those in government right now. Um, be it the UNP, uh, the SLPP, and uh, even the major opposition, the biggest opposition, uh, SJB. Uh, the SJB, they are of the view that given the crisis that the country is facing right now, we need a person with experience, a person who has done this before, a person who has at least been a prime minister or a president or held a ministerial position um, several times over uh, to get this country out of this rut. How does the JJB respond to that? We don't have anyone now. No? So we, we for Rani Lukram Singh is running the 47th year in politics hmm. and everyone else. Hmm. And we, so, so that criteria is over. No? So we don't have anyone hmm. simply. Hmm. Right? So then you have a choice of JJP supported by professionals and intellects. Hmm. Probably you can say it was what Gothabe also did. Hmm. But it's the difference is that the, the intent of politics is are different, and we have a team, and Anura categorically says I am not the expert in everything, hmm. but I have a economic and a social vision. The party has economic and a social policy, hmm. and we will get the support of everybody who would like to contribute, hmm. and it will be a collective effort. So hmm. there is no single person in this country single-handedly hmm. can make that change as executive president. Hmm. You need a better team and people support. Hmm. You can't just vote and sit back. You have to come to work at 8.30 or 8 o'clock. Hmm. You have to o wake up dreaming of the industries that we would wake. You need to talk to your children about the potential industries Sri Lanka can. We are not doing it. Hmm. We need that hope and we will bring that hope. Thank you very much, Chaturanga Abbe Singh here from uh, the Jathika Janabalavegya or the National People's Power Movement for joining us on our program. Um, thank you very much, of course, to all our viewers out there. And of course, given the current situation in the country, uh, it's uh, of paramount importance. Uh, and I think uh, during my nine years at News First and, and during my several years of hosting Newsline. I have made this humble request from the general public several times and I myself seem to have got it wrong. Uh, but we need to vote right. We need to vote uh, for a person or at least a policy that will bring Sri Lanka out of this mess once and for all. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you again same time, same place tomorrow. Take care and God bless.